Hey YouTube, T Holtz here. Hope everyone had a nice Thanksgiving. It's been a while since I made a video, so thought I'd get one out to you tonight. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, nitrates. Uh, Dan Haichu has uh, been making videos lately about nitrates in his tanks. If you haven't checked out his channel yet, please uh, take a look. He's got a lot of good stuff on there, and he's talking about high levels of nitrates that he has in his tanks and today he did a uh, he did a experiment where he vacuumed out his substrate and tested the water that came out from the from the dirty water from, that was sucked through the substrate to see if the nitrates were any higher in his substrate than in the water column and it came out no that the the, uh, the test from the water column was the same as the test from the substrate, all the dirty water from the substrate. And I'm not uh, surprised by that because uh, here I have a dirted tank, my 20 gallon high tank, dirted, and I never clean the substrate in my tanks. Uh, not with a dirted tank. I never clean it at all. I just uh, take water out and put water back in. So if there was going to be um, high nitrate levels in the substrate, that would cause high nitrates in the tank water, I would have high nitrates also because uh, I never clean my substrate. This tank here, 20 gallon high, very heavily planted as you can see. I actually did a trim on it today. You would never know it, but but uh, I did a trim on it. This water sprite here was, uh, was probably Oh, three inches or so below the top all through here was water sprite and it was blocking all the light through the whole tank so I took a lot of that out today to uh, let some light get into this tank uh, not very heavily stocked there is probably about 20 neons in here uh, Pristilla tetras four some harlequin resboras four quarry cats and I uh, did a nitrate test today on this tank and it came out to about 15 or so uh, between somewhere between 10 15 in that area hard to get an exact reading and um, I believe it's uh, usually stays in that area maybe around 20 is about as high as it goes and and uh, that's because I don't have uh, a really heavily stocked tank and I have it planted very heavily and uh, the um, not as much of a bio load with these small fish and all of these plants including the floating plants this Richia moss here the duckweed, if you can see it, well, not getting a shot because of the glare, yeah, there you go, the duckweed, these floating plants suck up a lot of the nitrates. I think Dan's tanks have much bigger fish in them, uh, creating a heavier bio load, and that's why he has a, a higher level of nitrates in his tank. So this one, uh, I took the test and it was about 15, and down here, this tank is even more heavily planted, definitely in need of a trim, as you can see. I mean, it's not, the light's not even really getting through to the bottom of these plants here. Uh, it's only a shrimp tank. I have two um, auto cats in here, and the rest is cherry shrimp. A lot of floating plants. A lot of Amazon frog bit, a lot of duckweed. And the nitrates in this tank, when I tested it today, after a 50% water change again, it was zero. It showed no nitrates at all in this tank. And that's because of the low bio load and the heavy plant load. I also have, as you can see here, a lot of snails in this tank. And if there's any uneaten food, there's actually snails in all of my tanks. I didn't put them there. They came in on the plants. Any uneaten food that goes in the substrate, the snails uh, take care of it. So they, they help uh, clean that substrate and, and uh, keep the tank water clean. But I believe in very heavily planted tanks, as you can see, very heavily planted. And that sucks up a lot of the nitrates. And I really don't have a high bio load in any of my tanks. And this one tested out at zero when uh, I did my nitrate test. Now over here in the discus tank, water gets changed every day, it's bare bottom, and I didn't expect to have a high nitrate level in here, and I didn't, this was about 5, 
before I did my water change earlier, five parts per million. And that's for daily water changes, so naturally this tank, the nitrates are low. As you can see, my disc is doing very well. One of these days I'm going to switch out the uh, these plants and get um, just put driftwood in this tank. Plants could cover with algae and I'm forever cleaning the leaves of the plants that I have planted in these pots and uh, they just get ugly covered with algae. So one of these days I'll switch them out and I'll just put driftwood and then maybe in the spring when these guys get a little bit bigger and get to be adults, I might put a little bit of uh, pool filter sand on the bottom here to uh, make the tank look a little bit better. But they're doing well. And the nitrates in this tank, like I said, tested out at five parts per million, but then you do get daily water changes. Down here, hard tank to film. I got a chair right next to it, so this is a hard tank to film. This is my oldest planted tank, and as you can see, the top is covered with floating plants again. It's very heavily planted. This tank is two years old, and like I said, I had never cleaned the substrate on this tank. Again, it doesn't have a very high bio load. I've been trying to get some more fish in here, but all we have around here is Petco and PetSmart. And uh, I buy fish, and a week or so later, they're all dead. So, I don't know, I'm going to have to do a little bit of traveling and get some better quality fish. Um, did the nitrate test in here, and this one was around 20. After my 50% water change that I did earlier today. I didn't test it before the water change. I wish I would have now, but I really didn't think about it. I really wasn't planning on making this video, but it, it was around 20 after 50% water change, between 15 and 20. And this is a tank, like I said, it's almost two years old, and I have never cleaned the substrate. I just take the water out, and put fresh water back in so definitely dirty substrate is not uh, going to be causing a high nitrate level if you're doing your weekly uh, water changes which I do once a week on all my tanks this tank here I have an algae problem I got some uh, uh, black beard algae on this uh, Nubius um, uh, I believe this is a Nubius Nana that's the only spot I got algae, it's all, all in that Anubius Nana. And a little bit here on this Dwarf Sage. This tank has six quarry cats. Uh, I think there's four tetras, four assorted barbs, and two or three, two um, auto cats. So not, again, not a high bio load in this tank either. But a lot of a lot of plants. And that certainly helps with your nitrates. And let's see, we got one more tank to show. My TV tank. We'll go in here and take a look at that quickly. This tank here, I did a nitrate test on it today. And what water change I did on Sunday. And the nitrates came out in here about 20. And a water change done about four days ago. This tank here, the problem I have is, I don't know if it's going to show it or not, if you can see it, I have some cyanobacteria or green slime algae, blue-green algae, whatever you want to call it. It gets, uh, there you see it, in the middle of this uh, kabamba. And that's a problem I have with this tank. I haven't been able to get rid of that uh, green slime algae. Today I added a power head, a small one. That's probably the smallest one you could buy to try to uh, uh, get some uh, water movement. I don't know how well you can see it, but there is some 
uh, green slime or blue green algae in this kabamba. I wanted to get some water movement. Maybe that will uh, help get rid of that. It's uh, cyanobacteria, blue green algae. Difficult to get rid of once you get it. And it's on the leaves there. It's probably not showing up well in the video. But other than that, everything is going well in this tank. This Blixa japonica has grown tremendously since I put it in here. As of all these plants, I've trimmed them a bunch of times. This kabamba here needs to be trimmed again. But this Blixa is doing quite well. As is this cardamine liriata and some nice uh, red edges on, on the tips of the uh, Rotala indica there in the back. And threadfin rainbows, red-eye tetras, a um, couple of German blue rams in here, penguin tetras, two band, uh, banded corby cats, and a couple, which I don't see right now, and a couple uh, purple rasboras. This week also came in some AR Mini. I don't know how well it's going to do here. I don't uh, use CO2. I got a few pieces of AR Mini. So far it looks okay. It's been in here, oh, about a week now. And it looks looking pretty good. It hasn't uh, melted away. That's a uh, tank, that, a plant that could definitely benefit from some CO2, but I don't use CO2 or any kind of fertilizers in my tanks. I just uh, have dirt, dirt substrate. But this tank is uh, doing very well. Also have one uh, zebra danio. Another problem. I got them from Petco, and four of them died. I have one of them that survived. It's not my water. I know that. PH is around seven, six, eight in my tanks, maybe six, six in some of them. And the nitrates in this one is about 20. Can't keep floating plants in this tank. I, uh, every time I put a floating plant in here, whether it be frog bit or uh, last week I got some, um, uh, geez, I can't think of the name of what I got last week, smaller than duckweed. And only lasted a couple days in here and it just melted away for some reason floating plants just don't do that well in here salvinia that's what i got uh, salvinia i was able to put some in another tank to keep it uh, alive in another tank but for some reason floating plants just don't do that well in here so that's my video we're getting long i just wanted to show that Dirty tanks never clean the substrate, and the dirty substrate really doesn't increase your nitrate count as long as you're doing your weekly water changes. Hope everybody had a nice Thanksgiving. Thanks for watching.